So in the first video, I just went over some, just kind of like some intuition on why we're using uh, some notation to process iterative algorithms. Uh, so now I'm just going to dive into our first example, and this is from uh, the week three prac, so we need to calculate the efficiency for various algorithms. Um, so we've got four uh, i is one, two n, do for j starting at one to i do x is equal to x plus one. I just cannot get those x's to join. So this is our algorithm that we're trying to solve. And so first Similar to what I did just in the last video, the first step to all of this is taking this algorithm and directly translating it into some notation. That's uh, kind of like, to me, one of the, the most important steps. Um, so let's do that. We got, obviously, our first sum here, which is our outer for loop, which is for i equals 1 to n. And the question is then, well, what are we doing? And if you kind of think about how this is structured, uh, it kind of maps out the exact same way, and you do actually just nest some notation in the exact same way uh, that you nest for loops. So if we think about what this is doing, like over on this side, the very first iteration we're going to have i equals 1, and then it's going to set j equal to 1, and then it's going to do x plus plus. Then, since j has reached i, it breaks out of that loop, since i is done, it kind of comes back and goes i equals 2. So now that i is 2, j restarts at 1 though. So j goes to 1, x goes plus plus, but now since j is not at 2 yet, j loops again to 2, and then we get x plus plus. And now i comes to 3, j equals 1, x plus plus, j equals 2, x plus plus, j equals 3, x plus plus. And x plus plus is just a handy thing. But if we kind of take a look at what's actually happening here is as for i equals whatever all the way up to n, how many actual basic operations are being performed for the different values of i? So let's say n equals 1. It would just do this loop once. We have 1 here. Let's say n equals 2. We have two more here, but it'll do these as well. So we have 1 plus 2 if this is kind of this area here, and this is for i equals 1, that's for i equals 2, this is for i equals 3. And so we actually get this, this structure where this should look really familiar. Um, your basic sum notation, I'll rub this out in a second, but our basic sum notation of i equals 1 to n of i is exactly the same as 1 plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, which seems to be exactly what's happening here. So you could even just map this directly to this formula, kind of knowing that they stand for the same thing, but I actually really prefer going through it the long way, uh, which I'll go through here. So if we translate this algorithm absolutely directly into this, we have 4i to n do 4, which is another sum, for j equals 1 to i do x equals x plus 1, and again, we're calculating the efficiency here, so the cost of n, um, and so that's 1. We're performing one basic operation. Um, so then we have this nice, 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 neat sum notation that we can start using sum laws on, and one sum law, so I'll just, uh, maybe just come over here, here for a second. I'll slide down a little bit. One neat sum law that we can use is that the sum of i equals, I think they use u to l, or it might be the other way around. There might be i equals l to u. Actually, I think it is. I'll just quickly... Uh, the way that it was written in the book, but obviously the same thing regardless of 1 is equal to uh, u minus l plus 1. And so that's a, that's a 1. 
And so this is pretty obvious. Essentially what you have from i to u is just u, right? But if i starts at a value of higher than 1, then you don't have 1 plus 1 plus 1 all the way to u, you have a smaller number, but it kind of makes sense if you're going from 1 to the number, what this boils out as if um, if L is 1, which it is in a lot of cases, we have u minus 1 plus 1, which is obviously just u, because if we're adding 1 plus 1 plus 1 u times, it's just u, kind of whatever we're counting to up here. Um, so that's kind of like one of our basic sum notation laws, and there's a page of them um, that we can look at on the end of week 3, I'm pretty sure. So our first uh, iteration of this cost of n kind of comes down to 4i equals 1 to n. And now this whole term boils down to, well, see, this is 1, but we'll write it out the long way just in case, i minus 1 plus 1. Uh, and so that's really obviously just i. So now, let's scroll down a little bit, we've got equals... 4i equals 1 to n of i. And this itself is a formula. In fact, it's almost kind of like the first formula you think of when you think of some notation. Um, that is the classic i equals 1 of i to n is equal to, oh, uh, sorry, of i is equal to n outside of n plus 1. on 2. And again, we've heard in lectures that this is roughly equivalent to a half n squared, and that's just because the plus 1 if n is kind of approaching infinity, uh, the plus 1 is, is not that important. But ultimately, the, the full equation here is just n outside of n plus 1 on 2, because that is the direct translation of, of that sum law. Um, and so then obviously, if we want the efficiency class, we can simply say that that is bound by theta um, g to the n squared. That's pretty obvious because obviously this is going to simplify down to n squared plus n onto these don't matter because they're not the highest order polynomial and so n squared is our class. But in terms of the full efficiency function it is n over n plus 1 onto. Sorry, n outside of n plus 1 onto.